Greetings, every people. It's your cult personality here. Tune Critic's name and tune's the name of my game. I sound like crap because I got con crud from Nightmare Nights. Whoop de freakity do. But that's not gonna stop me because, uh, lovely, lovely little Mim Kage over here and I are here to talk about a movie. And it's not a Halloween special sort of review thing of who's it. It's a Day of the Dead special. Because I'm Mexican. <laughs> Latina heat over here. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, I am Toon. You already know me. Uh, you already know uh, Mimi over here. This is a Toon Kage review of The Book of Life. This was a 2014 movie made by Real FX Creative Studios and distributed by Fox. It's what relatively... Uh, unknown for a while, but a lot of people were pushing it to get, like, you know, at least a nomination for, you know, Academy Award for Best Animated Feature that year. Unfortunately, that did not happen. So this movie kind of just went about its business, but only recently I've heard people talk about it. So, um, Mimi and I decided to sit down and watch this. And firstly, Mimi, dear... How do you think this movie uh, represented uh, Dia de, de los Muertos for you? Well, I have to say, it, it represents it pretty well. It took a few artistic liberties, specifically when showing the land of the forgotten, because, you know, there people actually get tortured, but that's, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a kid's movie. We kind of can't yeah. show that. Uh, but, yeah, it, 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 I'd say it holds up pretty well. All right. Did you want to start first? Oh, uh, no, you can go. All right. So, let's see. Usual what we like, what we didn't like about this. So, all right. So, what I liked, and this is the big thing that drew me to this, uh, no surprise here, is the animation style. Like, I love how they presented this movie, especially when we go to um, Land of the Dead. It's it's so bright and colorful, and it, it makes me wonder, so if I die, this is where I'm going to end up? It's just, like, one big party? I mean, like, this doesn't, this doesn't seem too bad. I mean, like, if I die, you know, until, go, like, hmm? You know, until someone forgets about you, and then you kind of end up in the land of the forgotten. Yeah, there's, there's that. But still, like, if, if one of my friends dies and we never forget them, they're going to have, like, the party of their life. So, you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't seem quite too bad, but... No, the animation style for this, it sort of uh, reminds me of, like, puppets, wooden dolls. And that's that's interesting, because how the movie is told is like a story. So I find it actually kind of fitting that it's, it's sort of like action figures coming to life, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, what about you, dear? Um, let's see. Well, I do have this. I was going to say animation, too, but that's not the only thing. I like the character designs. They're so... They're, they're really raunchy, but it fits. Like, you get the grimy feel from them. That they're not human, they're wood, and it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the best things about this movie is the love story. Uh, bet the the three-way love story between... Oh, boy. I am not, I'm not going to blank on their names now. No, wait, no. I remember. It's uh, Manolo and Maria and Joaquin. Joaquin. Voiced by Diego Luna, Zoe Saldana, and Channing Tatum, respectively. Channing Tatum is in this movie, by the way. You wouldn't have guessed it, but that's that's Channing Tatum as uh, Joaquin. So they got a pretty decent uh, voice cast for this movie, too. Yeah, their voices was their voices were pretty spot on. I do wish that there were it was a bit more Hispanic, but I can let that slide. Yeah, I I actually can understand that. Going back to the whole love story thing, it's rather interesting how it's all, how it um all lays out with like two gods basically putting the fate of like the the land of the dead in the balance of who gets the girl in the end. So it's it's actually kind of interesting how all that plays out, and it's pretty goofy how they were all like so tight, and now they're fighting for this girl's attention. It's just like I don't need a man, no, I, I don't need a man to fight for me. I'm awesome. Like yeah, you go, girl. You get it. Like, she gets it. Um, I will say, though, you got to feel for this poor girl. Fucking, she, people are trying to make her marry this one that she doesn't want to. The moment she comes back to life, they're like, oh, we should marry this dude because we don't want to die. Yeah. That, that, that kind of feels like there's a little bit of pressure there. I mean, if you don't marry him, then kind of like everyone's screwed, you know, so. 
Let me see what else. Uh, was there anything we didn't like about this? The some of the songs were kind of uh, to me. Really? Not gonna lie. Like I like the covers. Like the cover, the the song covers that the movie did were pretty cool. But when it comes to like original songs in the movie, it kind of made me go a little, make me it made me cringe a little bit. The lyrics were very weird. Oh, well, you have to understand. It's like it's it's puppy love. It's all this cutesy love stuff. I'm like, you know, the guy's singing from his heart. He's a musician. Of course, he's got to be a little bit sappy. It, it's cute. It works. I know, but most of the time when he's singing to Maria, that's that. Those are the cover songs. They're covers of like other songs that were kind of put through a Mexican filter, I guess, if you will. <laughs> a Mexican filter. All right. <laughs> Well, they add fucking, they add all the instruments you would usually find in a mariachi. Yeah. Mariachi. Um, the one song I was particularly pointing to, though, is the one he sings when he's fighting that one giant bull. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, that song kind of didn't stick with me. Yeah, it was more of a kind of cringy thing for me. Cause I, I get the feeling they're trying to go with it, but... <sighs> At the same time, it wasn't the best thing ever. Yeah, I can understand that. So, I think really the only thing I didn't like about this movie, I felt like some of the comic relief and some of the jokes didn't quite fit. I think when they got to Ice Cube's character in this, I'm kind of just like, eh, we already kind of know what's going to happen. Let's, you know, let's, let's keep the plot moving here. But, I mean, jokes aside, there were some really good stuff. The good outweighs the bad in this i think let me think is there anything you know that hmm? people might say that it's funny that two gods are wage are making such a bet like this you know betting on whether or not this one ch chick is who this one chick is going to marry but you'd be surprised how many mexican stories start with a god just being bored and doing things things because they can didn't like the last movie we review kind of have something like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, with Sinbad, you know, God's just bored, like, oh, I'm bored, I'm gonna put the fate of the world in a pirate, why not? And in this case, oh, we're gonna put the fate of the, of the, of the under, underworld and, like, the, this, these two guys who want to get with this girl. Whoever gets the girl, you never know, maybe the world will end up in the hell, we don't know. We can't say hell here. <laughs> you know, that's actually something I was questioning. What would have happened if the, uh, fuck... The green dude, forget his name. Brain freak. The green guy? I'm trying to come up with the... I'm trying to remember the name. I should know these names because uh, this is my the thing. The green guy is in Zibalba? Yes, yeah, him. Voiced by Ron um, Perlman, which I think is, is perfect. The guy has like a like a perfect villain voice. Yeah, you can he You automatically does. tell it's him too. Uh, but I was saying, what would actually happen if he would take over? Nothing really changed... Uh, he would probably yeah. just be a dick, I think. He kind of reminds me of how Discord would take over the, uh, the land of the forgotten and land of the dead and whatnot. Oh, that reminds me. What do you think of the candle maker? That was Ice Cube's character, and as I said, eh. I thought, he was, I thought he was Jesus for a second. I'm just like, are we getting Jesus into this movie now? Is, is Ice Cube Jesus? <laughs> uh and lore, this dude supposedly just makes candle. He makes the candles for each person when they're born, and then when they die, he kind of recycles the wax from the candles to make new ones. Is, is there reincarnation in this? Is this movie about to get philosophical? Can we get an analysis on this film, please? Because that that makes me think a little bit. <laughs> Maybe that's well, there, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. If I were to explain the entire thing, we'd be here for hours. Eh, that's true. I'm trying to remember. Um, I believe one of the people who worked on this movie uh, originally did. Uh, oh yes, I remember. Okay, so the guy, one of the guys who was working on this, m created uh, El Tigre: The Adventures of Manny Rivera. And if, for those watching, if you notice, you can see like Manny and I think his the girl character that he's with as cameos in this movie. If you really look during like one of the animated parts. Huh. That's cool. I, I kind of like LT Grab. I've been watching more recently. I'm just like, this is cute. I like this. I will say, the color palettes used in this movie are amazing. Yeah. Fucking, 
The Land of the Remembered, it's just so vibrant and so festive. Oh, that's what it's called? Land of the... Okay, it's Land of the Remembered. My bad. Yeah. Land of the Remembered, Land of the the Forgotten. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Um, Yeah, this actually was a pretty short one. I like that. I like that we can be able to do these in, like, what, like, 13 minutes or so, give or take? Yeah. All right. So... People who are watching, go ahead and put down in the comments what your thoughts are on Book of Life. And, if you'd like, go ahead and give uh, Mimi and I suggestions for what we should review next. We already have one or two things planned out, but we would like to hear your thoughts on what, I guess, we could review. I'm sure we've got, like, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of couple cutesy stuff. (laughs) You're going to be like, oh, so what are you doing on Valentine's Day, huh? Just, uh... Just so you know, I'm not much for couple movies. I find them extremely boring, so I will never make you watch one. Oh, okay, good. I'm safe. I won't have to watch Bridesmaids or anything. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm probably going to drag you out to Marvel movies, but I won't have to drag you. Oh, you won't have to drag me. Are you kidding me? Like, just we're just chilling there. Just like, hey, do you want to go see Doctor Strange? Uh, Yes, yes. (laughs) please. (laughs) I'm excited for Doctor Strange, actually. (laughs) Oh, I am too. Trust me. All right. So that being said, uh, this is uh, this is Toon Kage saying, um, if you're uh, if you're a god and you're bored, don't be bored. Don't don't put the fate of the world into a love triangle or a or a pirate voice by Brad Pitt. It's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah.